I have been fairly vocal about the negatives of a grain-fed feedlot beef diet, as well as only eating beef in general, and without fail, I'm always met by opposition from the carnivores, people being paid by corporations to promote an agenda. In this case, special interest groups, aka big agriculture, are paying influencers to steer people in the direction of consuming certain food products. This is very obvious in the vegan communities in the keto communities, but people don't recognize it because they think it's just some average person trying to make a quick buck off of some sponsorship. In the case of meat, particularly beef, sales have plummeted with all of the vegan propaganda. We spoke about the recent media blitz saying that beef is okay being funded by Texas beef companies, and there have been blatantly obvious money grabs like raw alignment shilling for supermarket meat. Michaela Peterson recently made a post on Instagram with a cute little infograph comparing estrogen in beef to other foods. Michaela, what do you exactly spend your free time doing getting dicked down by European chads? Then you come on Instagram and give health advice? I spend hours every day researching nutrition. It's why I'm comfortable giving health advice. It's why I have thousands of hours of educational content on my YouTube channel, on my website, on the various social medias I have. But I understand, Michaela, those studies are hard to read. You don't really understand them. So you use pictures and your father's popularity to mask your lack of knowledge. Is that a little mean? I don't think it's mean considering that Michaela Peterson is harming people's health with her advice. But that's okay because I'm here to tell you the truth about the downfalls of the carnivore diet. The first being atrazine, an estrogenic herbicide contained in grain-fed beef as well as grass-fed beef. This is because they can feed grass-fed cattle corn stalks, various byproducts that are considered forage that might have been sprayed with atrazine. So you have to trust your producer. Michaela, if the amount of estrogen in beef isn't significant, why do feedlot cows have tens of thousands of times the levels of estrogen in a healthy man? Atrazine is an endocrine disruptor, along with plastics, birth control, other environmental pollutants that actually cause ovaries to grow in frogs' testicles. Remember Alex Jones saying they're turning the frogs gay? He was on to something. And I'm not saying people didn't naturally have homosexual feelings. I'm not even getting into it, quite frankly. I mean, give me a break. You think I am like, oh, shocked by it, so I'm up here bashing it because I don't like gay people. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. The FDA has an official limit of 0.02 parts per million of atrazine in meat, but it is not routinely tested. But even that limit is over 1,000 times higher the level in a healthy male. Just based on this notion, anyone saying grain-fed beef is okay to consume is likely special interest funded, being backed by corporations, and has no regard for your health. You should disregard everything else they say. If someone kept telling you to take birth control as a male, would you do it? That's what Michaela Peterson is basically doing. And what if she suddenly says, oh no, now buy grass-fed beef? Should you still trust them? The second concern is antibiotic usage in these animals, which translates directly to the meat you're consuming. Antibiotics are known to destroy the gut microbiome. So many people have horror stories about their doctors prescribing them antibiotics, but this is what you're doing by consuming this agrochemical-laced meat every day. And we know how important digestion is for overall health, production of all of your neurotransmitters, not to mention impairing gut production of vitamin K2, which is necessary for testosterone production. Estrogenic atrazine plus antibiotics is a recipe for soy boys. There are many people reporting low libido, testosterone levels tanking from consuming this agrochemical laden meat to only be met with the advice of, you're not eating enough? Yeah, like downing an extra two pounds of poisonous beef is going to make my pee pee work again. Maybe the soy boys would be excited if that was the case. Another side effect of estrogen is weight gain. Arguably the most significant problem people are having when transitioning to a feedlot carnivore diet. And all of these people are consuming and advocating for industrialized meat without recognizing the problem. Are they, you know, low IQ, closed-minded, stupid, or just being paid to poison people with this meat?
Arguably, the most dangerous concern of all is iron overload in the liver. As some of you know, Frankie Boy's liver almost turned into a solid chunk of iron after only several months on an improper carnivore diet, and this can take years to manifest itself depending on the person's genetics. I have consulted over a dozen people just in the last week or so that have experienced this issue after several months to a year on the carnivore diet. They all had high ferritin levels indicating inflammation in their liver and immediately got better after donating blood, taking that iron out of their bloodstream. I explained this in depth in my iron overload video, but the principle is simple. Your body needs copper and retinol aka vitamin A in its animal form to transport iron as you know blood is composed of iron and copper. Plant foods contain copper and quality animal foods contain retinol. Consuming a beef only carnivore diet will eventually result in you overloading your liver with iron. The solution to this is to vary your foods. Make sure to have raw dairy, seafood, plenty of organic quality plant foods if you tolerate them to ensure your copper to zinc ratio is correct. Get plenty of sun to balance vitamin A and D levels and make sure to consume fermented foods for adequate vitamin K2 as it is synergistic with these other vitamins. The last last reason is something that will take years off your life long term, a lack of animal nutrients in the diet. When you feed animals corn, soy, slop, their tissue lacks the vitamins they synthesize from natural forage, grasses, pasture land. Just because your meat is grass fed doesn't make it proper either. There is a large variance between grass fed quality. The B vitamin content of wild quality animal foods will be significantly higher, so will all of the fat soluble vitamins, especially vitamin K2, which is something just about everyone is deficient in, very important for calcium metabolism, overall soft tissue health. Omega-3 to omega-6 ratios will be more balanced in quality foods, and something that is commonly overlooked is the mineral content of meat, which is dependent on soil quality. On top of this, high omega-6 in the diet from eating too much conventional beef, eggs, pork, and chicken can increase appetite due to an imbalance in the endocannabinoid system. So you end up overeating that crappy feedlot meat and these issues just keep compounding themselves. And you're getting told by these carnivore shills, oh, just eat more meat. I need to buy my daughter a Mercedes. Investing your money in quality food is the most important thing for your health. These nutrients are the building blocks for life and you should not trust your well-being in the hands of people who say grain fed is okay, people who spring collagen powder on their steaks, someone changing their ideas and what they're trying to sell every few months. I've always maintained a consistent message and it is obtain quality animal foods. If you can afford to buy local stuff, if you have access to local farms, that's great. If not, you know, organic in supermarkets, that's great as well. These special interest shills are twisting the words of people like myself to fit their agenda and make money for themselves by selling you powders, products, meat from certain companies that's cleverly marketed to make you think it's healthy. What they don't want is you growing your own food, you obtaining your food locally, you supporting small businesses that actually have integrity because then these parasitic elite people will start losing control of the food supply, people will become independent, and our world might actually become a better place because people will be happy. Happiness, guys, that's the key to everything. And People will not be happy unless we break free from our current system and these parasitic people. And listen, I don't like speaking negatively about anybody, but who's behind these people and the message they're portraying? Complete wolf in sheep's clothing, Michaela Peterson. I don't have to name all of the other people. It's not a good look. And it's hard to talk negatively about these people because they're portrayed in such a positive light. But how can you say it's okay to give people birth control? That is literally what Michaela's doing here. So. Thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, share it if you can. Definitely hit that bell icon. If you guys want to support me further, definitely check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, which advocates all of the principles that you need to become a healthy and happy version of yourself. You can also check out Frankie's Syringe Meat, Frankie's Naturals, frank-stefano.com for one-on-one -on -one consultations. You guys enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. Man, get ready to hang me with this one. I'm gonna get uh, all the how many how many simps how many simp white knights does Michaela Peterson have following her? Are they gonna knock on my door? Am I gonna have to get my leaf blower and blow them off the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks.